Hey everyone, and welcome to the Speckle Matata tutorial. In this video, we'll be learning how to set up a foot and leg rig. To start, we'll rig one leg together, then you can practice on your own by copying your work to the other side. In a bonus video for this tutorial, I'll show you the lazy way to copy your work to the other side, like a pro. For now, go ahead and download the free work file from the description below so you can follow along. Let's get started. The deformation armature is already set up as you can see. I have simple vertex weights applied to each piece of this character's mesh. And since this video is about rigging techniques, I won't go into detail about setting weights. You can watch my previous videos for more information about adding vertex weights to your mesh. Let's start by setting up some inverse kinematics for this character's legs. Setting up the main IK chain for the leg is pretty simple. In edit mode, extrude a bone from the ankle joint. Then clear the bone's parent using Alt-P. Then name this new bone IK-Leg.L, L for the left side of our armature. This name is arbitrary, but a good naming convention will keep us organized. Now in post mode, we'll add the inverse kinematic bone constraint. Select the new IK bone, then select the shin bone, the first bone in our chain, and press Shift-I. You can also press Control-Shift-C, then choose the IK option that pops up, but you know, shift I is a lot faster. Now let's move the character's waist down to see what happens. Our character doesn't quite work as expected because we need to set a chain length on the IK constraint. Select your shin bone and go to the bone constraints tab of the properties panel. Set the chain length option to two. Great, we set up our leg. There are some issues when we bend the knee and we can fix that by moving the knee joint forward a bit. Later, we'll set a pole target to consistently tell the knee where to point. For now, let's move on to rigging the foot. This is a preview of the ideal control hierarchy for the foot. For an ideal foot, we want the foot tarsal to roll at the toes joint, the heel to roll at the back of the foot, and the toes to roll on the very front of the foot. I'll show you how to set up the ideal control bone chain. Then we'll glue our original bones, the bones that actually move the foot, to this new structure in the end. First, in edit mode, I'll duplicate the foot bone and the toes bone, then press M to move them to a different skeleton layer. Hide the original bones by deactivating the original layer in the armature tab of the properties panel. We don't need to see those bones for now, they'll only get in the way. Then, let's duplicate the toe bone again and place the duplicate near the heel. Clear all the parents of these bones with Alt-P and we'll set them again soon. Name the former foot bone control-foot-roll.l, name the bone near the toes, control-toe-roll.l, and then name the bone near the heel, control-heel-roll.l. Now we need the bone pivot or rotation points to be in the correct place. The foot roll bone and the toe roll bones are currently anchored in the wrong direction. The heel roll bone is just fine. Select the toe roll bone and the foot roll bone, then press W and select switch direction. Now our bone pieces are rotating correctly. Now let's parent this ordinary set of bones so that they move the way we want. First, set the foot bone as a child of the heel bone using control P and selecting keep offset. When the heel rolls, we want the foot bone to roll as well. Then we'll set the heel roll bone as a child of the toe roll bone. When the toe rolls, we want the heel and everything else to lift as well. Great, that's it. Now let's take a big leap forward and get the ankle to move. In the armature tab of the properties panel, unhide the original bones by holding shift and enabling the original bone layer. Now make the IK-leg bone a child of our control-foot-roll-bone. 
attach roll bone. Now the ankle moves because of a simple parent-child relationship. Our foot still doesn't move how we want it to, but you can begin to see how things will work already. We're almost done with our control rig. We just need to add two more bones, and these bones will be a sort of glue or IK anchor for our deformation bones to attach to. So hide the original bones again, and in edit mode, duplicate the control-heel and control-foot bones using Shift-D. Select the duplicated foot bone and switch its direction with the W key. Name the bone ik-foot.l. Now we'll select the heel bone. Do not flip the direction. Name the bone ik-toe.l. Now scale down both of the new IK bones. Be sure to select the correct bones. Changing your pivot point settings to active element will help with this task. Now make sure that the IK foot bone is a child of the control foot bone and the IK toe bone is a child of the control heel bone. To do this, select the child, then the parent, and press Control P as usual. Now our super simple control structure is complete. Next, let's glue our deformation bones to our control bones. In order to control a bone with another bone, we'll create a single length IK constraint. Think of this single length IK constraint as a kind of glue. Now reveal the entire armature, and in pose mode, select the smaller IK-foot-roll bone, and then the foot bone, and add an IK constraint by pressing Shift-I or Control-Shift-C. Select the foot bone. It should now have an IK constraint attached, then change the constraint settings in the properties panel. Set the chain length to one, then enable rotation or the orientation option. This means that the bone will follow the position and orientation of the chosen target bone. Now let's repeat the same thing for the toes bone using the IK-toe bone as the IK target. Set the chain length to one and enable rotation lock. Now let's test the rig. Since the IK bones are children of the control bones, we only need to move our control bones to move our foot around. We can hide the rest of our rig and control the foot and leg by just moving and rotating our control bones. Next up, a little bit of cleanup. The last thing we need to do is make the control hierarchy a child of the root bone. Think of the root bone as a master bone. It's always good practice to make sure that your entire rig moves and rotates with your root bone. Tab into edit mode and select the control-toes-roll bone, then the root bone, and press control P, keep offset. There, now we've got a proper rig. Next, we'll set up some pole targets for the legs in order to control the knees. Now we want to control the way the knees move so our character's legs don't randomly break. We'll do this with pole targets. I like my pole targets to dynamically follow the knee joint. Check out the bonus videos for this tutorial to learn how to set up a dynamic pull target. For now, we'll stick to something more basic. Extrude a new bone from the knee. Clear the bone's parent with Alt-P. Move the target bone out front just a little bit, farther than the foot, I would say, and name the bone IK-target-leg.L. Set its parent as the root bone. Next, in the bone constraints panel of the shin bone, set the new IK target bone as the pull target. You'll need to select your armature first and then find the bone in the armature. Pull the character's waist down and fiddle with the pull angle. I set mine to negative 90, and this will be different depending on the bone roll of your leg bones. Also, the left side's angle may be different from the right if you're using bone mirroring. And there we go. We can now control the direction that the knees point. And time to test. Guess what? You can add individual toes to this rig too. I'll show you that process in a pro bonus tutorial for this video. In the meantime, have fun posing your first foot rig. Check out that sweet side roll action. Peace.